Hi, I'm Seamless, and it is actually Friday now, if it only has been for half an hour, but uh, for me anyway. Today, I'm going to do another quick sort of FL12 video about my new favorite thing in FL12, which is this, the envelope controller. This, there actually was an envelope controller in FL11, and for the most part, it is pretty similar. The one thing that sets us apart from the rest of the, the FL11 version is that it has this XY mode. There's probably other changes as well, but this is the one that matters to me. This XY controller is essentially, um, it's what other dogs refer to as a macro. Uh, and it's also what Decadance refers to as a smart knob, kind of. Um, you might be familiar with other plugins, like if I were to use, say, Citrus, which I guess would be in here. And the, the XY controller in the front is that I can control and I can link most things to it. Various parameters can all be linked to Mod X. And then you can also link it and you can do different things, different kinds of tensions, draw different stuff, and you can make that make it so that like one thing is doing one thing with the X controller and then the other thing is doing something else entirely with the X controller. And then when, they, when the X controller is moving, it is controlling both of those things just inside Citrus. The XY controller here works in such a way that you're able to do that with any parameter whatsoever inside FL. For example, if I wanted to use it on a uh, right click, yeah, an EQ. I can say do the usual kind of yo yo uh, filter movement by making two peaks like this, and then I can control these guys independently, but with the same control. So the way this works, the way this will work is that I have arti different articulators inside the envelope controller. I want to link this guy to articulator one, so I link the controller. Find an internal controller, you see the free envelope controller has different articulators. Each of these articulators, it's, it's actually pretty much like how it works inside Harmer. Um, Harmer, every parameter has an articulator. And inside the articulator, you get an envelope, a LFO, keyboard mapping, velocity mapping, mod X, Y, and Z, and a bunch of different other kinds of mapping. But this is basically the way that you can articulate that particular control. It's pretty much the same way here, because now articulator one represents the X and Y, but it also represents the LFO, keyboard mapping, velocity mapping, and even random mapping, which could be kind of interesting. Um, the X and Y mapping, mapping, though, however, there is only one X or Y knob. There's not eight X or Y knobs. There's just the one X and Y knob that moves all eight articulators. So if I linked this guy to articulator one, and then I make a movement, you might notice, oh, look, nothing's happening. And this is because um, the envelope controller originally, before it had the X, X and Y mode, was something that you had to trigger. So you would trigger an envelope, trigger an LFO, or maybe the LFO we could keep going, have global mode, that kind of thing, and need to be triggered. So then you have to set this to, say, continuous output. And now, oh, there it goes. And it's doing the entire spectrum. So I can set it to say, I want it to be, I want it to start here. And go up. So it's doing that. You see that? That's a bit much. Let's bring it in a bit. There we go. And now I'm going to link the other guy to Articulator 2. I believe it also doesn't need to be linear, like I said before. You can do whatever it is that you want to do, and you can link this to any parameter whatsoever that can be, that can be automated within FL Studio. This is astoundingly cool for um, a lot of reasons. I, and you might have seen me use this when I did my last track from scratch with the glitch hop thing that I'm doing currently. I, I use a pretty macro heavy piece of sound design. And a lot of how the sound worked was the result of the fact that the one piece of macro was moving all these things. And this was kind of possible before because you can link multiple things to a single automation clip and link them in different ways. Like the controller linking window you could link and have different mapping formulas and do different things. But those were mostly different versions of just one clear point to another clear point. And while there were some differences, you didn't have the, the, the graphic versatility and being able to do pretty ridiculous things, you know, like something like this, where you can weirdly move stuff around like that. Like, that's not, that wasn't something that you could have done with the old controller linking methods. So this is way more versatile, just way easier in every way and just so much better and it should have been something I think that should have been happened sooner but I am a-okay with the fact that it's happening now because now it's happening and I am super into that 
Let me just kind of look at the XY, basically the XY controller, the envelope controller. I'm not really going to go into the, in depth into it, but like you know, a lot because I am still planning on doing an actual FL Basic series where it begins at the beginning and it's and it's sequential and it works out. So like I can't just start in the middle. Like this is very much in the middle, and so is the other video about how to use third-party plugins and stuff like that. So that's those are just kind of little teasery things so that people could have little tidbits of information they might not necessarily have known about um, before I dive in and do the official for real thing. Yeah. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.